Welcome back, y'all, Mm-mm. to the Split Screen Gaming Podcast, Mm-mm. episode it's forty-two in twenty eighteen. My name is Chad Michael. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Who you is? Oh, me. I'm gonna break your song here, and I'm gonna say that my name is Holden Pardo. Holden Pardo, y'all. Welcome back for another year. Hope you had a good uh, <laughs> Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, vacation, New Year's. Just, you know, that was me on guitar, and Chad was singing throughout all of that. I was That's on guitar true. right there. I was on yeah. the wah pedal. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Oh, man. Did you have a good good holiday? I did have a good holiday. Yeah? It was nice and relaxing. It barely snowed, which that was nice like for me. That shit. No, it was great because I don't – now that I'm not in a city, I have to shovel snow when it snows. Like, there's oh. work involved in no, the snow. No, tell your mom to do that. That's what adults are for. <laughs> My sick mother, you go out there and do that because I'm <laughs> taking care of you way too much. <laughs> Woo! All right. I think this is going to be exciting because we have the start of a whole new year. We're going to be talking about a We're whole finally... new year. Well, it's the end of a year if you're in China. <laughs> this is true. Uh, we are also going to be talking about our game of the year, our game of the month from last year, oh, that's Bioshock. Right. Y'all which remember we've now Bioshock? Played. I do. Bioshock's game. Spoilers, great game. it was good. Should we introduce the new game of the year, or game of the month? Yeah, game of the right month now, for or... January, Juan Wario, uh, is Earthbound. Earthbound. Also called Mother 2, if you are in Japan. Yep. Which is actually kind of funny, because I think in our third episode or so, we both played Earthbound to kind of talk a little bit about the beginning of the game. So now we're actually going to play the whole game. Almost a year later. <laughs> we are. We are. I'm going to be playing it on SNES Classic. I think you are, too. I will as well. Although I technically have it started on my 3DS already. Me, too. But it's been, it's been a while, so I'm just going to play it out on the Classic. Yeah, yeah. So you can get it. Is, are these the only two ways you can get it, aside from emulation and the original system? <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's on the Wii U Virtual Console oh, as well, gross. I believe. Um, so all, you know, five of you guys can enjoy that. <laughs> with you the, overestimate with, by the, way, with the, the game population for the Wii U. It's four. <laughs> it's four. I way overestimated it. But you're also be playing it with inferior controls that are very delayed and laggy. If you recall yeah. back our Super Mario World episode one, holler all that back was now. episode one. Yeah, that's the earliest callback you could possibly do. There's a. Uh, I'm not even going to go into that tangent. Um, no. So Earthbound. No. We'll be talking about that at the end of the month. You can't just tease people and say, I'm going to say something. There's a a band that opened for a band that I liked, and they have a song called Callback, and we couldn't hear the words that they were saying. But it sounded like, lick on my balls, it's a callback. Lick on my balls, it's a callback, waiting for J. Crew. I can see why I had to force you to say that, and you didn't want to say that. I know, right? It was not (laughs) worth it. Lick on my balls, it's a callback. Waiting for Jake Krug. Three and a half minutes in, and we've barely talked about what we've been playing this week. Oh, it's not shit. Bioshock. I didn't do time codes. Okay, time code starting now. What have we been playing this week? Holden, you go, because I've got a lot to talk about. Well, that's good, because I have like nothing to talk about, because yes. I played mostly Bioshock. Yes. And I looked at the time codes for us last week, by the way, and yeah. I talked for like 12 minutes on my I know. Uh, on mine, and you spent a minute, maybe. <laughs> yep, yep. So I think it's going to be the opposite this time. I played Splatoon with my brother a lot because he got Splatoon for Christmas. I got it for him. And that's really fun to play with someone when you can use the great voice chat service Nintendo offers, <laughs> which is which is called calling them on your phone while playing the game. <laughs> so, but it was still fun. I enjoyed it. The matchmaking's not fantastic, though. Like, I would, I want to play with my brother. I would like to be in the same team as him, but you don't get to decide what team you're on they just do that for you which i guess is a mild complaint but sometimes he would join i would finish the match i'm in and then it would start a new match for me and he still wouldn't be in it he'd have to wait to the next oh that sucks it was kind of crummy yeah the match took three minutes though so it wasn't like a huge waste of time wasn't there a thing in like with the switch recently maybe it was like fifa or something like that where you couldn't you couldn't play with friends like all you could do was (laughs) random matchmaking (laughs) that sounds about right that sucks yeah that sounds about right. I don't know which game that was, but I, I, I don't doubt that FIFA. at all. Yeah, because EA is, you know, just no. It's, we'll just blame killing EA. It. We'll just blame EA. Anytime something bad happens, we'll just blame EA. Blame Canada and EA. EA Motive is in Canada. There you go. Well, I'm going to blame me for talking too much and not letting you talk about your game uh, you've been playing. So 
you should just go and ahead you, and talk about that. So you also played uh, Bioshock, which we'll be talking about in yes. depth with spoilers very soon. Very For an soon. eleven-year-old game. For uh, it's ten out. years, isn't it? I think it was two thousand seven. I think you're two thousand seven. We'll look it up. Yeah, we'll look it up. Uh, Obvi Mazel Tov. Uh, <laughs> it's Mazel Tov. Thank you. <laughs> what games have you played, Chad? <laughs> I played. Shut up. I got two platinum trophies this wow. week. Wow. Two platinum trophies. Number one, Bioshock. Okay. Because I went through that, played it all on Survivor That's difficulty. Right. No Vita Chambers. I have a lot of questions about that, by the way. But we'll wait for all right for Bioshock. Yeah. Number two. I played and got the Platinum Trophy for Accounting Plus on PlayStation VR, <laughs> which is the uh, the game from, what is it? The Rick uh, and Crows, Morty Crows, Creators. Crows. And yeah, the Rick and Morty created Justin Roiland, one of the guys who created Rick and Morty. Not Dan Harmon, but the other guy. Right. Um, and that game is fucking crazy. What is it exactly? It looked like just craziness. It, that's that's all it is. It is it's kind of like Inception. <laughs> Inception and Rick and Morty. <laughs> so <laughs> you, it this is an odd combination. It's, it's like The Godfather and Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical though. Like you put on you put on these VR goggles in real life, and you open mm-hmm. up and you're in this just big gray space with uh with like a basketball hoop and a table and a Rubik's cube, and Justin Roiland starts talking to you. Hello, welcome to Accounting Plus. You're doing really great so far. Uh, let's teach you a little thing. And then it goes from there, and you put on another VR headset, and suddenly you're in the forest with, like, this crazy-ass worm that's poking out of a tree. Like, what are you doing in here? Don't touch my shit! Hey, that battery's mine! You broke my thing! Put the thing back in the thing! And it's just yelling at you. And then you go deeper into another level, and it's just this giant fat king. He's like, hi, welcome! And you have to stab him to death. And it's like, it is just screaming... And obscenities and hilarity. Like, one of the pairs of VR goggles is a frog's butthole. And you have to, like, find, get the frog and put his butthole on your face to go deeper into VR. And then to get out of VR, you have to kill yourself and come back one stage at a time. And it is insane. It's probably... The whole game is maybe 15-ish, 20 minutes. If you're a Rick oh, and Morty fan... really short. It is, yeah. If, well, if you're a that's Rick and Morty fan... short. It is absolutely worth getting it. Um, but it's like 15 minutes, but there's so much in this game that you can possibly like, I'm going to go listen to this whole radio broadcast that's playing on the radio right now, instead of doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It's a really dense 15 minutes. Yeah. Or you could go be like, I'm going to pick up this book about nudes and porn, but it's actually just a bunch of peaches with butts. (laughs) 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 It's just so ridiculously stupid, but I had so much fun with it that I was like, you know what? I think I'll get this platinum because it was super easy to get. Oh, I'm sure. Most of the platinum was like just seeing everything in the game. Yeah, just yeah. Go knock on this door and hear every single response this guy has behind the door, or listen to every single radio station on the radio and laugh your ass off the whole time doing it. So I got another platinum trophy there. Congratulations, Chad. I am I'm very proud of you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Nope, Two platinum. No and I know you work very hard for these platinums, and it's Two plats. Oliver Platt, it. Ben Platt. So what was Two more difficult plats. platinum to get? Was it Accounting Plus or Bioshock? Well, Accounting Plus to- took me probably a total of an hour to an hour 15. So Accounting Plus. So Accounting Plus, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I got those two platinums, and then I was like, you know what? It's cold as fuck outside in Chicago. I think I'm going to stay inside and play some games. And I said, I got Wolfenstein 2 sitting here on my PS4. I'm going to pop that bitch in, and by pop it in, I mean I downloaded it digitally, so I looked at it and hit the button. Waited for a few hours, then got to play it. Yep, and then I literally finished it about an hour ago. So, is the hype true? Is it really as good as people say? Oh my god, Holden. Because you liked the first one a lot. I did. I liked it a lot. And this one tops it in every way. Wow. I I listened to everybody in, uh, who said, it's just way too fucking hard lower the difficulty and just play through and i was like you know what i'll do it so i did the second difficulty which is like don't hurt me mm-hmm. they, they call them all these different things so i did don't the first hurt one's me. like baby like is like baby daddy or something like that it, no it's like, like i'm a baby or yeah baby mode or something something to do with babies and i did that for about an hour but that was still super hard and i was like you know what i want to play this game as if well, it were kind of like doom where you're just running through running gun there are too many like i think it's how you're things. supposed to play it 
Oh no, no, no. If you play on some of the harder stuff like the stealth kills and and taking cover behind things, but I wanted to run and gun without need for health and armor and things like that. So I dropped it down to baby mode. And I had the fucking time of my life with this game. <laughs> I wish I had played this earlier because I'm still on the high of it since I just beat it an hour ago. But I'm pretty sure this would take my number five slot for game of, for games of the year instead of Resident Evil. Wow. It it has an amazing cast of characters in it. Which are, all I wanted to do was watch these characters. It's kind of like, if you had told me two years ago, you came up and you said, Hey Chad, you know, in two years, you're going to play a game and you're going to think BJ Blazkowicz is one of the most relatable characters and you're going to empathize with him and he's going to have this deep storyline and he's going to be well acted. I would say, Holden, you're a fucking idiot. You don't know me at all. You want to do a podcast together in a year? No, that sounds fucking terrible because obviously you don't know anything about my taste in games and we wouldn't get along. But this is a real right, conversation Holden. that happened a few years ago. <laughs> you I were predicted right. the game. An unexpected twist and I fucking loved it. The storyline is so fun. I was laughing my ass off the whole time and the, there are so many characters that are so uh they're really really well written to be mm-hmm. natural. So, but how does that compare to the first game, though? Because wasn't the first game known for all these same things? It yeah, just does it better it was, now? Like... But it just kind of hypes it up. Like, they really leaned into the comedy and character okay. of it all. It's going to and... be dark humor considering the subject matter. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're slaughtering Nazis and things like that. But um, all of these characters were so unique, and they were very natural, but obviously, like, taken up to, to, up to 11. <laughs> um... <laughs> Why don't and you it has some 10 of louder? the, <laughs> but it goes up to eleven. <laughs> I they were some of the best performances of 2017, and I I when I saw on there that B J Blazkowicz, Brian, he got nominated, Bloom, right? Yeah, he got nominated. I was okay, like, really, yeah. really? The character who used to literally just be a picture of an angry guy on the screen while you ran through and <laughs> shot Nazis, but no, super and because great that story. performance back in the 90s that did get an award for best acting in a game, <laughs> yeah. It did. So. I actually found myself like setting up to tradition. I found myself going through the missions. They're fun and all, like shooting all the enemies, all the cool ass guns, dual wielding, mm-hmm. double machine gun. You can dual wield any guns. Like that was all fun, running and gunning. You could similar in Doom. You could like sprint at people and explode them later in the game, and yeah. that was fun. But I found myself wanting to just like, all right, I want to beat this level so I can see more of the story and explore mm-hmm. the ship more with these characters, and. God, that sounds kind of like, oh, I read the Playboy for the articles. I don't look at the nudes. Like, <laughs> you're playing a Wolfenstein <laughs> game, and you don't want to do all the shooting and running and gunning. You want to look at this. Like, that's amazing. It's a great it's like accomplishment. Saying, I play Grand Theft Auto, but I pay for all my cars in the game. I don't steal <laughs> any of those. So that's an amazing accomplishment for Machine Games and Bethesda Soft. Like, amen. Yeah, they have a it. very – their reputation was already pretty good, but it seems to be growing. Like, every game that comes out with – with the Bethesda brand on it, it's like, oh, cool. This is going to be an awesome, hardcore gaming experience that I can't wait to get into. Yep. Or something that just isn't typical or isn't normal. Yep. There's something always kind of Bethesda-y about it. There's something also... Something kind of has that feel. There's a character... Because that's what about Fallout and all those games, the, the, the characters and kind of how wacky and zany they can be. Yeah. At least there's that's a, a highlight of Fallout 4 to me. Different there's like a Mass Effect-type choice publisher. that you make in the first game. Where you decide almost in the very beginning of the game one of two characters to kill, mm-hmm. and then the other character is with you the rest of the game. And he was one of my favorite characters in this game. And I was like, "Man, Wait, he carries the decision over." Uh, well, you, they they ask you like they do a, an awesome recap at the very beginning, and okay. then the the nurse comes up to you, you're all crippled and shit like that, and she's like, "Do you want soup or porridge?" And then it flashes back to that memory, and you have to choose again one of those two guys. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll keep Wyatt this time again. And he, like, goes on these acid trips and fucking sees little chameleons running everywhere. It's hysterical. But I was I loved that character so much, and he was so integral to the story that I was like, man, I wonder what would happen if I chose the other guy. And I kind of want to go back and play both games now with keeping the other guy instead of Wyatt. Maybe I'll do that. I'm going to do that. It was good. It was a good game. Well, next week I look forward to hearing you tell me about the other character. Now, he was really <laughs> fun, too. You come oh, back, it's like, it, it was terrible. The whole experience was so changed and awful. It's the worst game I've ever yeah, played. Yeah, what, what if that was the case? Yeah. What if it was the case? Excellent. Excellent game. Also, 
I was I was looking up I something I do on Twitter anytime I play a game that I particularly love or performances that I see or movies that I see that I really love I shout them out on Twitter. Um, and I was trying to find all of the all of my favorite characters and their voice actors. And Deborah Wilson, do you remember Deborah Wilson from Mad TV? Oh yeah, she was one of the main characters in this game. And I was oh, like, was she really? Deborah, oh my god, that <laughs> did totally look like Deborah Wilson. But I couldn't find her Twitter, so I couldn't shout her out. Yeah, she might not have one. I, right? That's so weird that celebrities don't have Twitters. Although I don't know if she's considered a celebrity anymore. I know who she is. As soon as you said who it was, I knew who you were talking about. And I don't know this, these things. I'm not a you know celebrity stalker or anything. Mm. I don't do that. Unlike you, who knows who Deborah Wilson is from Mad TV. Yeah, I'm a pretty big deal. So <laughs> I did play one more game this week. What else I did you play? About. Um, it was just really quick. Um, after uh, New Year's Eve, we went back to my cousin's house and we played Snipper Clips while we were very, mm. uh, we'll say, intoxicated. And um, it was super fun because we just stopped doing the puzzles and turned it into a fighting game where we did try to. <laughs> it was like Snipper Clips jousting. We'd walk, we'd run from one side of the screen and met each other in the middle, and we would just cut each other to see who ended up getting cut. It was it was actually really fun. It was super fun. That Always sounds like, like a good time. It was a great time. I just forgot about that, and I want to throw that in there. It's important. Good. Shout out it was to very important. Clips, and shout out to Squid Bubbles. What's that game called? Squ- uh, Splatoon. Splatoon, yeah. Squid Bubbles, same thing. In my top five games of the year. Great game. Whew, I think that's all I played. Is that all you played? Well, I did play one big game. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Bioshock. Bioshock. Spoilers for Bioshock, but you had all month to play it. Uh, yes. If you are looking to avoid these spoilers for some reason and come back to it later, I'll look for the time code. Skip this chapter because we have that functionality. Bioshock. But how could you not want to listen to this because it was so good? I know, right? So I I played, I want to say like two hours of it five years ago. <laughs> and I was like, okay, it was all right. Like, yeah, whatever. I never felt compelled to keep playing it again. And this now is among some of my favorite gaming experiences yeah it is such an engrossing world it just has really interesting philosophies in the game it's just super interesting like and i actually really want to go back and play the second one because of how engrossed i am in the world of bioshock and Mm -hmm. rapture and rapture i had a few little nitpicks but it was incredible i played it uh when it first came to playstation 3 because it was a pc and xbox exclusive for a while Mm -hmm. And it came to PlayStation 3, and I I bought it and played it. But I didn't get a whole lot of the story because throughout the game, all the story is done with audio logs. and Or audio logs Which and Which I normally don't walkie-talkie. like, but it works really well in this setting. It does. Yeah. But back then, this was right when like HGTVs were starting to become a thing. And you got that crop of games like Fallout 3 and this game where... You couldn't read subtitles because they they were like made for high definition, and I had a regular ass standard definition TV. I was like, well, shit, I can't read the text there, and some of the audio like was being muffled by the game sounds, so I didn't get a whole lot of the story or radio transmissions. So I was like, yeah, that game was really cool. I like the environment and things like that, but I didn't get a lot of the story, or really didn't quite understand. Would you kindly so much? So going yeah. through it this time, I got. Every, and of course, I got the platinum trophy, so I listened to every audio diary as well, and I mm-hmm. soaked that shit in. Yeah, I, there was a few times where I had a hard time understanding what the audio logs were saying. Oh, I turned there on were, subtitles from the very beginning for everything. I hate having subtitles in my games. Yeah. I cannot stand it. If there's ever an option to turn it off, I always turn it off. Can't stand subtitles. But in this game, I slightly wish i'd turned them on but i was still stubborn about not using them yeah because i i think i had to adjust the um the audio levels for the sound effects the music and the and the talking right. talking was up all the way and i and out of the 10 notches they give you uh i brought everything else out to a four because it was that hard for me to hear some of the audio logs sometimes yeah and, and that, and that can, but i think that shows though how good those audio logs are because normally I don't care about the audio logs too much. It seems like they have the main story, and if you want to like learn about something else that's mildly involved in the world, listen to the audio logs. Whereas this is, you learn about the world, you learn more about the story by listening to those audio logs. Everything ties in really well, and they're also just really fucked up. Some of them are yeah. really disturbing to listen to. 
And it, it added a whole new element of walking through these halls of this destroyed city and hearing some guy talk about, um, there was one part where a guy's talking about uh, snapping a kitten's neck and you hear the, is it a dog? And you hear the dog whimpering and you're walking through the world. It just, it makes you so uncomfortable. It yeah. makes you highly, highly uncomfortable. I think that's one of my favorite things about this game is the feeling you get from the sound design, from the story, mm-hmm. from the atmosphere, from the... Yeah. The, this game was... We talked about environmental storytelling with Super Metroid, and this is like the first game that really did it incredibly well in a 3D space. And mm-hmm. Rapture is such a an amazingly well thought out... Like it's, it's a place that you could believe is a real place. Yeah. And with I, all of the different... Uh, the words written on the walls and things like that, that was not really something you saw before this game. Where mm-hmm. it's like, you never really feel safe in that game. No, never. Because never of, at all. of all of the atmosphere and the, the audio logs and the sounds that you hear. Like, you can always hear somebody yelling in the background, going crazy. Those are the big daddies when mm-hmm. they're kind of stomping around. Uh, the I'm glad you brought up Super Metroid because those are the two games we've kind of featured in our Game of the Month so far. Yep. And, they're, and atmospherically, <clears> obviously <throat> they're extremely different games, but they each have an incredibly strong atmosphere. And it's hard to compare them because... I mean, one came out on the Super Nintendo, one came out on the Xbox 360. <laughs> yeah. But I would say that for the atmosphere, the caliber of atmosphere we got during the Super Nintendo era, this is equally as good as it is for the Xbox 360 era. Like, it's just super engrossing. And like you said, all the sounds. Um, every time you would just hear the steps and feel the vibrations in your controller of a Big Daddy running towards you, mm-hmm. you just had this, oh no, like, oh crap. St- you just kind of became a part of that experience. You were in the the uh, was it Jack Ryan? Is that the guy's name? Uh, Andrew Ryan. No, and... the the character you play as is Jack Ryan. Oh, Jack. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of feel like you're there as well. Like you are the one seeing this world. It feels like it might be under the ocean somewhere. Like you just kind of believe it. Yep. Even though it's totally ridiculous, it'll never ever happen. Really? You don't think it'll ever happen? Having an underwater city like that, probably yeah. not. <laughs> I think it'll absolutely happen. Hell, there's Atlantis out there. That's that's true. I didn't think that's about right. that. That's right. You ever seen but that movie Atlantis? Considering the game takes place in 1960 and the world itself, Rapture, was made in the 1940s, I want to say, that's probably not technologically feasible <laughs> <laughs> at the time. But, um, well, wait, so let's talk a little bit of the story and kind of like what yeah. the story is. It basically starts off with this plane crash where this guy lands in the, in the middle of the ocean, and of course there's a light tower in the middle of the ocean, which is very the necessary. The lighthouse, yeah. Light, lighthouse, yeah. And he goes in the lighthouse, and there's this big sign from Andrew Ryan. The sign says, um, no, um, was it, uh, no God, no, um, no kings, only men, or something that like sounds, that. Yeah, it's like his play on no shirt, no shoes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was uh, being satirical of. And mm-hmm. then he goes in this pod and goes underneath water, and you just see this underwater city you know what i mean city it's like skyscrapers like the neon signs like it looks like it was new york city down down uh, underwater or something yeah and they're all all the buildings are connected through like glass tubes that people walk through but when you get there it's all gone to complete shit yeah and the first thing you see is a guy getting murdered yep. as soon as you you get there and he's trying to break in your little capsule in your, even though you're defenseless but he ends up running away because you're of course you're fine because it's the opening of the game that's 15 hours long you need to be able to do that <laughs> so you don't die and i think this guy's name is atlas atlas yeah. kind of says hey we need to take down this guy named andrew ryan he created this place it's a place where there is no rules or no regulations people do what they want there's no no nothing impeding on people's decisions at all so you start seeing things like right. uh like um, the Atom drug becomes very popular, and people kind of get obsessed with this drug called Atom. And then there's yeah. things called plasmids, which enhance your your genetics to make you able to shoot lightning and stuff like that, or like uh, um, use a um, like a flamethrower in your hand, like throw fireballs and stuff. And there's all these like cool little advertisements you'll see where, like at the beginning of the game, they show the incinerate plasmid with a guy lighting a cigarette for a woman with like a snap of his finger. Like, and they kind of yep. have this very cool like '50s kind of vibe to that. But it doesn't work because the people became, became too kind of drug obsessed. Essentially, it sounds like with right. The basically, and, they go into yeah. like these withdrawal symptoms without getting mm-hmm. more atom and more yeah. of these plasmids, and then they just turn crazy. They turn completely crazy. And something this is where there's like a stretch. There are these little girls who carry the drug with them at all times. The little sisters. Well, they they harvest yeah, the little it. Sisters. 
they, they harvest it. Well, they also have the little needle that has it inside of them, too. Yeah. And there are then these big, these things called big daddies, which are, like, I guess, like, the old school, like, um, like dive suits that people would wear. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't, there's a term for it. I can't remember the term for it, but they it's, kind of protect the little sisters. Yeah, the diving suits with the giant helmets and... Yeah, and without kind of ruining... arms for the bouncers and... Yeah, and then you basically are kind of tasked with Atlas as, like, a, a freedom fighter trying to take down the leader, Andrew Ryan, who seems still held on that his ideas are better, even though it clearly wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my like, favorite things about this, is that he started this whole city, he's just like, listen... I want to fucking do my own thing without regard for mm-hmm. government and rules and things like that. So he starts his own city where he invites scientists and artists to come down mm-hmm. and just live their life and do their research to the f- the fullest extent of whatever they want to do and yeah. truly be Nothing free down there. Them. Yep, and and it all goes batshit crazy. Like people become gluttonous with all of their atom, mm-hmm. and the scientists are like doing these horrific experiments on people. Um, yeah. But and but everyone in this thing has their all their whole like I'm doing this for for a reason that they believe is is right, whether mm-hmm. it's the the butcher like one of the first bosses you fight or Sandra Cohen who yeah uh, is forming these masterpieces quote unquote masterpieces with these people, everyone believes they're doing it for the right reasons or for something that they think is beneficial to the society that they've built down there even though it is completely it- fucking up all their lives. Totally. I think it's also because there's no cohesiveness to all of it because they all want to do their own thing. So it never really yep. comes together in any way. I think that's where it kind of tears that society apart because everyone's going in such a different direction. Which is cool because you don't have to know any of that if you don't want to. Like This is kind of what the audio logs kind of fill in is people's own beliefs and their own ideologies in this world. So you can skip this, and if you skip it, it's still a really atmospheric, fun shooter as you kind of go through all these different environments in Rapture. But would you call it a shooter? I would call it would an call, action RPG. I would call it an it's is it I guess it's kind of RPG-ish. There's no like oh, experience points. I would see I was kind of thinking about that because you could then say that Metroid Prime is a first person RPG game. You yeah, are leveling kinda. up and getting new weapons. I would consider, like, like Nintendo famously said that it's not a first-person shooter. It's a first-person adventure game. I would consider this yeah. a first-person adventure game. That makes and sense. I kinda, yeah. But, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you play the game and the genre doesn't really matter. Like, it's just – it's a really cool story you're witnessing yeah. through the eyes of someone else. It wouldn't have worked if it wasn't first-person, I don't think. So, I think it kind of had to be first-person. Yeah. Also, there would have been some spoilers if it wasn't first-person because your character – he. he is he a splicer? I get the impression he really is a splicer. Your character, well, obviously, you be- as you start gaining more and more plasmids, you're definitely becoming a splicer. Yeah, but uh, no. So what happens? Your character about halfway through the game, that kind of mid game twist. Cool, did you see cool it? Would you kindly? Did you see that coming? No. So when no, I didn't see it coming at all. I saw. I the, can't believe um, you didn't get that spoiled for you like ten years. No, I, I honestly I didn't. I knew that as soon as I got to Andrew Ryan halfway through the game. I'm like, okay, something else is going to happen here because there's no way it's like, you killed Andrew Ryan, hooray, and then you're, like, helping you save Rapture for the rest of the story. Like, I knew something was up at that yeah. point, but that whole sequence was so well done. Yeah. So essentially the guy, Atlas, who's telling you what to do would always be like, all right, would you kindly grab the wrench and, you know, beat the splicer with it? Would you kindly, you know, go into the tea garden and um, shut down the, um, was it the, the airflow or something like that? Uh, in there like, and he's always saying would you kindly would you kindly would you kindly finally you get to andrew ryan which he tells you would you kindly kill andrew ryan mm-hmm. and andrew ryan has this whole really amazing speech about um is a um a man was it a man has freedom a slave obeys a man yeah or, uh, a man chooses. a man makes his, a man chooses and a slave obeys yep. and he kind of kept saying that over and over again and then eventually you kind of get the idea that he basically tells you you are a slave with this key term, would you kindly? This guy, Atlas, yep. has been taking control of you <clears throat> with the term, would you kindly? And he starts saying, would you kindly turn around? Would you kindly run? Would you kindly come back here? And, and you kind of just obey every action that he does. And then, at this point, Andrew Ryan is destroying Rapture, is what it seems like. He has like an, a self-destruct that's happening. Yeah. And he says, like, would you kindly kill me? Like, he has you kill him. While he keeps saying the slave obeys a man 
uh, a man chooses. I took that as to be he was trying to make you finally like snap out of the brainwashing. Yeah. I think like saying, the, a man chooses be a man overcome the brainwashing. Exactly. I think it's exactly <clears throat> that's what I was thinking too because there's this level of arrogance to him where he's so confident that his ideas are so much stronger and it was the death of him because he thought you were going to turn in that moment and you didn't. You killed him. And there's obviously it's a video game made from, you know, 10 years ago, so you really can't see the detail of the facial animation, but I got the impression that he was in disbelief that he was dying in that moment. That he was wrong yeah. this entire time. And then turns out that Atlas was a longtime enemy of Andrew Ryan, who had been manipulating you to do this. And you basically just handed him the keys to Rapture with yep. Andrew Ryan being gone. He was, uh, so he, he was Fontaine. Yeah, Frank who, Fontaine. Who Ryan had a huge spat with and thought he killed. Mm-hmm. And then he tried to like this grassroots movement with everyone and these led the freedom fighters. And he's like, I'm going to take back over. And he went by the name of Andrew, uh, not Andrew Ryan, uh, uh, Atlas. Atlas. Yeah, uh, and it so you were actually, uh, you were made in Rapture. Jack was. Yeah, you were made in Rapture by Tenenbaum, and then Tenenbaum made it so that you grew up in two years to a full size adult, and then they sent you out of Rapture to the real world until they needed you again, and they could bring you back. So they actually brought you back to the lighthouse, and that crash happened on purpose. Well, actually, you, you made the crash happen, Brian. So you the the plane was hijacked. You were actually the one who hijacked it. You just don't see that. Yeah happen otherwise would have ruined the spoiler the first five seconds of the game yep uh that was probably one of the coolest sequences in the game the 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 death of andrew ryan that was an insanely brilliant moment and i didn't see it coming at all yeah so i really hope that people who haven't played this game have have skipped this whole section to play the game (laughs) first (laughs) yeah because we have just blown all of it but like man i was so floored and i was already really into the game and at that point, I just finished the rest of the game in one sitting. What did you think about the little sisters and the big daddies? In gen- like what, in terms of gameplay, or yeah, like a, them yeah. as them as a, a gameplay, like a choice you had to make. Um. So when I first there were some little there were some big daddies that didn't have a little sister. They only, uh, yeah. So they only don't have a little sister if they like the little sister's gone into the hole and then they go and find them at another hole and bring them back out. Yeah. And there were a few times that I'm like, oh, Big Daddy, I want a little sister right now so I can – because you basically use the little sisters to gain something called Adam, which helps you level up. Right. And – well, not level up, but, like, get more attributes. Yeah. And I would see Big Daddy, like, oh, I'm going to kill this Big Daddy so I can get the little sister. I spent all this ammo killing a Big Daddy, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, where's the little sister? Damn it! There's no little sister here. I yep. did this for nothing. Cause those I did are that one brutal. time, and I was like, fuck. They're brutal, brutal fights. They yep. are – very demanding and what's really cool about it is the big daddies don't bother you unless you bother them first so you see one it's like it's all good it's all good i just hope i don't piss it off for any reason at all because there are a few times where i use the the plasmid hypnotize the big daddy yeah and to to protect me but if you accidentally shoot them while you're shooting the splicers he'll just start coming after you and yep. those moments are terrifying because I usually was using a big daddy when I was low on health or something and needed the extra help. So all of a sudden I have the guys who was already worried about fighting and the guy who's even more terrifying on his own right, both <laughs> of them coming after me. And I'm like, I'm so screwed. There's no way this is going to work out. And I was playing on the normal difficulty. So you played this game a very special way. Yep. So I want to know what you thought of the big daddy fights in particular, or really just in general. How You played on survival, right? I played on Survivor, yeah, the highest difficulty, Survivor difficulty, and no Vita Chambers, which means you're just saving constantly. If you die, you have to go back to your last save game. Mm-hmm. So I was saving constantly. After every, like, three or four bad guys, I would save. Which, in the beginning of the game, very early, it is hard as shit. And you gotta rely... Well, because you like, only have a, a wrench on... or something. Oh, right, you have the wrench and, like, the electric plasmid. Yeah. And it's super hard, and you then finally get the pistol. But once you get... Some of the plasmids, like Enrage, is one that I used a lot. I never even you can, touched that one. That's one where you could throw it at an enemy, and they'll attack everyone but you. Okay. So I would use that, like especially if there was a big daddy in the room, and there were several bad guys, I would use it on one guy. He would usually start attacking the big daddy, and then I would use, let the big daddy clear out the rest of the room, because then everyone would start fighting him. Oh, So I would okay. let the big really daddy smart. take out the rest of the room, and then it would just be the big daddy. And, I use I'd use the security bots a lot. Is I throw the security bot? Oh alarm. yeah, yeah. That Hack was super everything. Yes, 
Yep, hacking all the security bots, and especially once you finally get the thing, you take enough pictures of it so that you can automatically hack the turrets and and bots. That becomes didn't even do so the pictures useful. at all. I'm a picture. You that's didn't? Stupid. I didn't do any of the pictures. Yeah. Oh man, that's I think that's I made the game... a large part of the U, the RPG part. Yeah, I think a lot of the uh, I think did a lot of things that made the game harder for me. But keep going. I'll yeah. talk about it. So yeah, if you're playing on survivor difficulty, you have to take pictures because that's how you get increased damage on everything. Mm-hmm. It lets you hack things faster. It lets uh, it takes longer for things to recognize you, cameras and things like that. So yeah, another key to, to that game was hacking everything and using those to your advantage. Like shoot somebody, back away near a turret that you had hacked, and then let the turret kill the guy. Um, but big daddies, I stayed away from for a long time, and I didn't kill any until I had had like the machine gun, some armor piercing rounds, the shotgun mm-hmm. and things like that, or the especially the frag grenades. Those were super yeah. helpful against them too. But yeah, once you get a lot of those plasmids that are upgraded and, and make things a lot easier, the game actually, as long as you're, you Smart think about, about the room as you yeah. go into it rather than just running and gunning, uh, it's not terribly difficult. And as long as you're saving often enough that, oh man, I know exactly what I did yeah. wrong in that one. You, you just too jump much. back into it. Yeah. See, I thought the game got exceptionally harder as it went along. Well, it's because the enemies start having more and more health, assuming that you're taking pictures of them, because then you get, like, three <laughs> times damage to them with everything that you do. Oh, is it really that significant? Yeah, there's, like, damage plus, damage plus plus, damage plus plus plus, and then there's, like, plasmids and tonics that let you even magnify that even more from your camera research. Okay. So I didn't do much of the cameras at all. I literally took the one mandatory picture, or, like, the four mandatory of pictures. The, of the, spli- the spider slicers? Yeah. Spider splicers. And then the pictures um, that I had to take for, who was this? The guy in um, the Fleet Hall, where you have to take the pictures for his masterpiece. Oh, yeah. Sander Cohen in Fort Sander Frolic. Sander Cohen. Yeah. So that, I took pictures for that. And then beyond that, I didn't take any pictures. It sounds like I should have, because I had a really hard time in the later stages of the game. Yeah. Especially because uh, not only was I doing it that way, you have a choice in the game to either, when you find a little sister, you can either harvest them for their atom, which gives you a lot more atom, or you can rescue them, which gives you less atom, but you get like a prize if you do that enough times. Yeah. And I did I did the rescue way, because I couldn't, I felt so terrible killing this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, and that, I think, made me get items at a slower pace. Yeah, well, eventually, over time, with all of those plasmids that you get and the atom that you get from the occasional mm-hmm. teddy bear, it, uh, it works out. Yeah, it kind of okay. evens itself out without you having to murder a girl and pull a giant slug out of her belly and eat it. Is that what happens? Because I didn't even see that occur. Because I never, yeah, I never did. Yeah. It. Well, I for obviously for the trophy, I had to to rescue them all. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they're, so they're walking around all the time, getting atom from dead corpses, and yeah. then the big daddy. They're obviously the splicers are going to come at them and try to steal the atom from them. So that's where the big daddies are there to protect them while they're doing that. And then all of that atom is being stored in the sea slugs, which is where they found Adam and things like that. And there's a sea slug mm-hmm. in their belly. So when you kill them, you reach in their belly, pull out the slug and they just kind of like explode. Oh, no. little yeah. girl. You don't want to kill I mean, you get girl. so much of that sweet, sweet Adam. <laughs> <laughs> what about the gameplay? Oh, it was fantastic. I had two points where the game froze in me completely. No! Froze completely, but if you just put your PS4 in rest mode and then came back again, it was fine. Yeah. Thank God. So I didn't really lose any place, but it was kind of frustrating. But the gameplay is super, super solid. Um, I felt like it wasn't the strongest shooting mechanics. But it's, that's not the main like, purpose obviously, of the game. I, don't think, I think we agreed it's not a shooter, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, For... it's one of those things where... like. Uncharted doesn't have the best shooting mechanics, but it kind of adds to the believability of that world because you really wouldn't be a perfect shooter. You know what I mean? You'd, you're just a treasure yeah. hunter who happens to have a gun. And I kind of get the same sense here is that I'm just this guy who went below Rapture. Obviously, if I know I'm not, but it kind of adds to that I'm not the best shooter in the world because I'm not the best shooter in the world. Like, it yep, just wouldn't I'm make just sense if I were. Yeah, this isn't Call of Duty. Like, I'm not, I shouldn't be having these you know, incredible headshot moments. You kind of just yeah. feel like you I didn't feel like it got in the way at all, foot. definitely. No, no, it Which never got in the way. To me, it, it actually added to the experience. I think if it had these, like, incredibly tight shooter mechanics, it actually would have felt a little weird. Yeah. What um, are some of your most used plasmids? Oh, I used uh, Incinerate and the electric one a lot. I loved yeah. the, the bees and sending <laughs> yep. the, the swarm of bees out. That was a good one. 
Um, I used those ones um, the most in terms of combat, but I definitely took advantage of Hypnotize the Big Daddy, and I definitely took yeah. advantage of the um, of getting the security bots to go after enemies instead. Oh, yeah. So one thing that would happen with me is I would I would be hacking um, something, and I'd accidentally set the alarm off to get all these uh, bots coming after me. But if there was a splicer around, I just throw that at them, and then they wouldn't ever touch me. The the alarm bots. So I kind of use that to my advantage a lot. Um, but I actually didn't use them as much as I probably should have. I was definitely was kind of shooting more often. Yeah. And I actually played back and played the beginning of the game again just before recording the podcast, and I use the plasmids a lot more often, and it does make a big difference. Like if does. you rely yeah. on just shooting, you're never going to make it through this game. You have to find a way to balance those plasmids versus the the shooting um, aspects of the game. Yeah, like shocking someone while they're standing in water or burning them while they're yeah. in oil. Especially yep. if you play on the harder difficulties, you have to take advantage of those things. Totally, totally. I'd even like, it got to the point where towards the end of the game, the big daddies are just so hard to take down compared to earlier in the game. that I'd be thinking, okay, there's a big daddy over there. I'm going to lay these proximity mines in this direction. Yep. I'm going to attract his attention, then run, and he's just going to hit all these proximity mines. He'll get his health down a little bit. Then I'll shock him so I can shoot him with like an explosive um, uh, barrel. Then when I get the crossbow, the crossbows were very effective against the big daddies. Yep. So you just kind of think, okay, like, here are the items that I have. Like, how can I set up this environment for my advantage? To my advantage. It was, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of I ended I up using, that, yeah. obviously, Enrage a lot. Uh, yeah, I should have done that way. I, I always used... saw that. I'm like, that sounds dumb, and I just didn't use it, and it sounds like I should have. <laughs> I've used that one. My, my, like, my always in my left hand, like at a, so it could be quick, was the mm-hmm. uh, electric one, the lightning one, just because that was always, oh shit, there's a turret that recognized me. Immediately shock it, yeah, and then I can run up and just automatically hack it. Mm-hmm. Um, I use that one a lot. I use the hypnotize big daddy, um, telekinesis. Yeah, is a big one because sometimes I'd be out of ammo on any guns that were useful, so I would pick up like explosive containers and throw them or that was one where i always knew it was useful i had it because you have to have it. it's part of the uh, mandatory uh, plasmids and yeah. every single time i'd be like oh i could use this here i never had it equipped in in a swap <laughs> plasmids sec- like box was too far back to be worthwhile yeah so i always was like oh i could use this here to great advantage damn it i don't have it and then it switched to the telekinesis so I'm like, okay, I need this now because I keep missing these opportunities, and there'd be no opportunities to really use it effectively. <laughs> so I take it away, and then I come back again. So I always miss out on telekinesis. Yeah, that was yeah. really helpful for the big daddies, especially mm-hmm. the ones who would like shoot the mines at you. You can just pick yeah. the mines up and shoot them back at them. Yep. Those are always easy to take down because I would just um, shoot an electric bolt at them, and then you can just a single shot with a um, explosive um, shotgun shot. Yeah, takes them out usually. So that worked out pretty well for me. But were there anything in the game that because it's been now ten years that you would necessarily yep. change or didn't like too much? Because we've been just kissing this game's ass basically, which it deserves. I think I think it holds up incredibly well, surprisingly, I, for being a ten year old game. I was just thinking um, if this game came out today, it would get a few nicks for some of the things that are just kind of necessary back then to get a game like that to run. But it would yeah. still be a very highly regarded game if it came out today. I really do believe that. Yeah, I think there would be good. just very minor things like I would make jump the X button instead of the triangle button. Mm-hmm. Um, I would – they do this in Bioshock 2, but being able to have a plasma in one hand and a gun in the other at the same time rather than having to switch back and forth. Oh, you can do that. That's cool. would be super helpful. Yeah. yeah, in Bioshock 2, yeah. See, the only thing that I think they could have changed, and oddly enough, they should have learned from Mass Effect 1 – and had very long elevator rides because <laughs> when they, whenever you switch between one chapter to the next chapter, you go in this elevator and then it cuts to a loading screen and then you go back to the same elevator and then you enter your level. And I'm like, it would have kept with the immersion if you stayed in that elevator and just kind of waited as it loaded. Sure. And it can say kind of breaks you out. Super minor nitpick. But that is that is that. The only part of the game that I was playing, and I'm like, this is incredibly frustrating, 
is the second to last mission, or really the last mission before you fight Fontaine, where you're getting you're uh, escorting the um, oh you're getting, you're yeah, the, the big daddy suit together, and you're escorting the little sister. I could not find so many of those um, items that were necessary to make the big daddy suit. Really? Because yeah, like everyone would tell you, go here, go here, go here, except right. for one of them. It was like the the formula to make you smell like a big daddy. Yeah. It didn't tell you with the era where you were going. So I just wandered the entire area over and over again. That's realized... one of the ones that there was like multiple, like there was four or five of them, but you only needed three. Yeah. And it took me forever to find them. Forever to find them. Um, but I was still having fun, so it didn't matter. But then the litter's little sister section, where you're escorting the little sister, it was only her dialogue that upset me. Because she kept saying the same things over and over again. She'd be like, hurry up, don't be slow. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm ahead of you in this hallway, please hurry up. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Please come here faster. Um, that kind of bugged me. But again, that's just a nitpick. Like, yeah. that's not a huge issue with the game. It was incredible. It was so good, I'm honestly worried to play the next few, Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite, because I have both of them. I got the collection. But it was just so good. I don't know, like, how could they do better than that? I heard Bioshock, Bioshock 2 is cool, because you play yeah. as a big daddy the whole time. Yeah. You don't have that, like, weird scope view, do you? Like, looking through the helmet? Oh, like, when you put on the helmet? I don't yeah. I don't remember that being a part of it. Okay, that would be disappointing. It was like that Because you're, you're a rosy... Oh, you were Rosie in this one too. Not yeah, a bouncer. Um, the DLC Minerva's Den is something that I never actually played, but it's a lot of people's like favorite standalone DLC for anything, and that it's that on its own is an amazing game apparently. So is that's that worth playing. The, that's not included in the collection, is it? Yeah, it is. It is okay. I gotta find that. Yeah, it's d- d- DLC for Bioshock Two. Oh, for Bioshock Two. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then Infinite is absolutely worth playing just for the story and the ending of that game. I already know how that game ends, which I'm kind of bummed about. But I it's, still want to play it. It's still worth playing it to kind of see how it all ropes yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. If you were to give Bioshock a recommendation, would it? It sounds like you wouldn't give it a recommendation. Oh, absolutely. I'm very surprised absolutely. to hear I you think say everyone that. should play it. <laughs> everyone yeah, I think should this play is... this game. I think this is, if you're an adult gamer, or at least a gamer that doesn't mind disturbing stuff, this is a must-play game. And you like Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. Ayn? Yes. Ayn? I know it's A-Y-N. It's Ayn. Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. Atlas Shrugged. Ayn Rand. Yeah. Who? Andrew Ryan. Ayn Rand. Mm-hmm. Atlas. Mm-hmm. Atlas Shrugged. Mm-hmm. Atlas Shrugged. Ayn Rand. And then at the end, the boss. What did you think of the boss? I So I... The end boss, when you're fighting... Fontaine, yeah, and he he looks like Andrew Ryan, or he looks like Atlas from Atlas Shrugged. Mm-hmm. I, when I played it originally, had spoiled it because I found out that if you use the electric gel gun, it basically it just cheeses the whole battle, and he goes down so freaking quick. Yep. So I did I that again that this out. time as well. I've never actually fought him like you're supposed to fight him. Did you? So throughout the whole fight, yes. And then I was really low on health. I didn't have a lot of ammo left. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I have the electro gel, which I never used the entire game. I'm going to use yeah. that. And I'm like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> like, yeah. That was really quick. Yeah, it was. I didn't know that it was a known thing to cheese the fight, though, because it really made it a lot easier. I was down to, like, no health. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to have to do this all over again. And then he, I just I know that's one of the. I know that's one of the biggest people's biggest complaints is that last boss battle and how awful the boss battle itself is, but I've never actually played the boss battle because I just cheesed it both times. I don't think it was awful, and I don't think it should have been a um, super difficult boss battle. I mean, it was already harder than a Big Daddy, I, I would say, because of yeah. all the other stuff that, that's going on. His moves aren't hard to dodge necessarily, um, but I kind of didn't mind that because I think it would have really messed with the climax of the game. If it's like, okay, going in for attempt climax number 10... Up. <laughs> so I wasn't bothered by it. I wasn't bothered by it. I liked cool. the, the final boss battle. If you were expecting cool. a Dark Souls battle, you you're playing the wrong game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We just talked for thirty two and a half minutes about Bioshock. It was worth it. Well worth the play. Well let's worth jump into the some play. of the news because it's been almost two weeks since our last episode and there's a shit ton that happened. I don't have that many news stories, so I have you don't? six. I have six. I have fifteen. Let's do a lot of yours. This is well. It's been yes. Yeah, we'll I guess start it's been like two earliest. weeks. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get some some of these out of the way really quick. One Meister's Pokemon Go has a either. new. Okay, good. Pokemon Go has a new AR mode, augmented reality yeah. on iPhone, and it's actually really freaking cool. You were showing they, me some videos of you playing it, and I have to admit that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, you can walk right up to the Pokemon and just get up in their face. Yep they they have like this this expert handler achievement where if you you as you get closer they get alerted to you and they might run away but if you like get closer really slowly then they start to get freaked out and you back up a little bit and then mm-hmm. you start to work your way up then you get like extra bonuses when you catch them for stardust and things like that so it's a pretty cool one and they actually show up as the size they would be in real life which is cool so there's actually a picture tim cook from apple tweeted when it first came out and it's him standing next to the big red one from ruby and sapphire in oh, uh, uh, apple Geardon? park uh yeah so he's standing next to that one going ah and it's so cool to see like the size difference between the two mm-hmm. so that's a super cool little addition to the game cool cool uh cuphead officially has sold more than two million copies which i'm so excited for because for hopefully cuphead. that means we're gonna get some kind of whether it's an expansion with more bosses or there will be a sequel to Cuphead, or maybe a sequel. Yeah, I kind of will be that sequel. multiplayer too. So I'm glad that's doing well. Everyone should go play Cuphead. I can't. I don't have an Xbox. But thanks, you Chad. Fuck, so fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> thanks for making me feel bad. Go back find an Xbox, Xbox on the street. <laughs> the street. <laughs> on the street. Oh, one more thing about gaming on iOS that I thought was super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um. Apple now requires games with loot boxes to disclose the odds yes. of those loot boxes. I'm sure all of them are extremely pissed about that because I'm sure the <laughs> odds are not great for the good stuff. So That, that was a really like, awesome thing for them to do. Yeah, apparently something has been happening in China for a while now. Well, maybe like a little over a year. Mm-hmm. But it's for things like random card packs in Hearthstone to like gems and things like that. And other free-to-play games, they have to let you know, hey, you have a .4 chance... 4.4% chance of getting a legendary card or whatever mm-hmm. it is. So I think that's really awesome, and hopefully that kind of bleeds its way over to making some kind of ESRB requirement as well to help curb. It'll it'll come. I mean, the the, peop, the consumer outrage over loot boxes is so big, the industry has to respond that way. Yeah. They just have to. Hey, read me something of yours. So here's a non-important story, but I just want to talk about it because this is something that really upsets me. Okay. There's going to be a Slender Man movie. The oh, poster why? came out today. It comes out in the very horrifying time that all horror movies come out, May. It's coming out May 18th. <laughs> just in time for that and, terrifying holiday, Memorial Day. <laughs> and here's the thing is, have you played Slender Man? I haven't. All I know about Slender Man is that it's this urban myth. Mm-hmm. that these little girls actually ended up believing it and slender man quote unquote told them to go stab their friend 17 times so these little 12 year old girls went and go killed their little friend out in the woods that's what the plot of the movie because is of slender man. yeah so i the game's actually it's a really simple game it is not yeah. like a horror game in the terms of like dead space or resident evil it's not that ambitious it is you are going through the woods collecting these pages they're like seven hints or whatever and you hear him stomping behind you all the time, which is actually really scary. And you lose the game if Slender Man sees you. So you could turn a corner and he's just right there. And you're like, it, it actually is kind of scary, I will admit. I liked it. It's You can get it on iOS for like a dollar. It's I think it's worth it. I think it's, it's actually not that bad. So I thought it could make a cool movie. Like there's like a good element of it's more what you hear and what you think is there than what you actually are seeing. So I'm like, okay, maybe. But the the director of the movie is this guy named Sylvian White, who has made such horror classics as The Losers and Stomp the Yard. I just watched The Losers on New Year's Eve. Did you really? I like that movie a lot. Yeah. (laughs) But it's not like a horror movie. It's not like there's nothing. None of the people who are working on this have any sort of horror chops at all. It's not like he's a James Wan. Yeah. And I just want a video game movie that actually has good support behind it like if these guys That's are not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen it's really upsetting because i thought this could be a really kind of cool low budget horror film and it just has the same bs cast from every terrible horror movie in the past 10 years it's got 
it's just gonna be it's just gonna be crap it's gonna be total crap and the fact that it's coming out in may basically means yeah this won't compete against horror movies in october so we'll just release this shit any time of the year <laughs> why not summer in so I summer that. that's from frozen olaf i do know that actually <sighs> okay so, not an important I wanna, story but i want to blow through a couple of these real wanted quick to share it um one whoever you are i assume you listen to this podcast the person who keeps doing the DDoS attacks on PlayStation and Nintendo over the holidays, stop it. Just stop yeah. it. That's so stupid. When people are opening up their Nintendo Switch or their PlayStation on Christmas and they can't access the eShop. Wait, it was PSN. only was it only Sony and Nintendo? If so, this I year blame, it was only Sony and Nintendo. I blame Microsoft. In the last two years it's also been Microsoft as well. I blame Microsoft this time. It's it's their fault. It's all That's them. so fucking stupid. You're doing yeah. you're no one thinks you're cool. Not only that, but you're not harming the companies as much as you're harming those people's Christmas Day who bought, yeah. who got a Switch for Christmas or got a PlayStation for Christmas and wanted to use it. You're really pissing them off more than you're pissing off Sony yep. and Nintendo. In the long term, at least. That's upsetting. I hate that. Yep. So stop it. Unless the only time it's okay to DDoS is when someone gives a review for a game that's less than what you thought it should have gotten. <laughs> <laughs> you're right you're exactly right it's the only time it's appropriate yeah <laughs> uh, PUBG surprise wants to launch on every platform and become yeah more than including just a game. The Nintendo Switch apparently yeah he said ideal like in an ideal world everything we'd be on everything and he also yeah. wants it to be uh, like TV and movies obviously I want to make as much money off of this game as I can <laughs> oh, it's because it's huge right now well if it yeah. can run on an Xbox One as well as it does no question it can run on Nintendo Switch not at all <laughs> But he said part of the reason for the Xbox exclusivity for now is because of the obviously the early access camp uh, program that's on Xbox that PS4 and Switch don't have. Yeah, and also that so Xbox I will take anything. They Xbox will take any game on our to... system. <laughs> yeah. When that goes Sony's... 1.0, I assume we'll see that on PS4. Yeah, I'm assuming. Also, alt. I'm going to do one more, and then you can read something else. Okay. Uh, la 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 la. Oh. <laughs> Nintendo Power, if you were a fan of that magazine. Yeah. If you're a fan of Nintendo Power magazine, it is officially back as a Nintendo podcast, and it's one of the most boring things I've ever listened to in my I life. I didn't even listen to it. I heard you say that, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need to listen to that. It I don't want so to. Here's the thing is, I don't want to listen to a podcast from the company itself, because obviously it's just going to be marketing propaganda. It's not going to be. Yep. A meaningful discussion on that topic so i don't that's why i don't listen to the um the playstation blog they have a podcast and a youtube channel i'm like yeah because yeah. it's from playstation like of course they're gonna say everything is great they're gonna be like well this game wasn't as everything good as awesome. that's yeah exactly um it's like there's this um there's this youtube channel called the nerd crew or it's red letter media but they thing called the nerd crew and it's just people who buy into the marketing of every company entirely so they defend everything that that company does <laughs> It's like that. Like, it's never going to be critical in any way, which is important for this kind of media, I think. Um, well, I have some Nintendo news. Actually, two okay. pieces of Nintendo news. And this one is that Nintendo, apparently, this is an interview with uh, uh, President uh, Kimishima, said that he wants to sell, or he thinks they're going to sell, 20 million Switch units in the fiscal year, the next fiscal year, which is April 1st of this upcoming one to March 31st of next year. I think it's going to happen. I think so too. Yeah, and I honestly think that. Did you a, see that? I think it's conservative. Yeah. Did you see that in Japan? It officially has sold more in its first year than the PS2 did. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's, in, one thing to keep in mind there, though, is that console sales have been going down in Japan. Yeah, they've not been as high as before. It's because mobile games are really, really big. And I think that's what appeals with the Switch is that it is a mobile console experience. Yeah. So. It's it's pretty cool to see that's picking up steam there, but I think that we haven't really seen the best of the Switch yet in terms of the heights it's going to oh, reach. No. And oh, they're yeah, pair, definitely, and, definitely. and I think that there was also talk like a month ago that they wanted to make 25 to 30 million Switch consoles for next year, and I thought that seemed really high. But oh, like, yeah, what, I though? That. Is that. Is that really that high, considering how well this is already selling? The biggest hurdles have been getting them made because people seem to be buying them as soon as they get them in stock somewhere. So I think they just want to have a lot on hand so they can avoid the whole Nintendo just short supplies everything so they can create artificial demand. They want it so if you have the impulse of, I want to buy a Switch, you can just go to a store and buy one. So I don't think they will sell $30 million, 
I think they will sell sell like twenty to twenty five million, but they want to have that extra breathing room. Yeah, they so want to people... get to the point where you can go to the store, see it, and impulse buy it. Exactly, exactly. So I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's awesome. Go for it, Chad. Uh, another Nintendo one is from IGN. They had an interview with Shinya Takahashi from Nintendo's planning and development division, mm-hmm. and there the the main part of the article was why Nintendo thinks DLC is a good fit for Switch, which I think is ridiculous because they're 10 years late to DLC. <laughs> and he's, Takahashi says, I why think the we titles think Twin that Sticks you is really good for Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I think the titles that you download when you purchase have a very good compatibility with the idea of additional content. I believe the Nintendo Switch, compared to most of our recent hardware, makes some of the best use of the ability to download titles in their entirety, since it's a console that you can also carry as a portable. They're like, oh, because you can finally download games, that makes them good for content that's additional. Like, shut up. <laughs> Everyone's been doing that since 2001. But well, those are what they call marketing. Interesting at the... they're, they're called marketing <laughs> yeah. articles. They're just marketing articles. That's all those are. At the very end of the, the interview, though, there's a small part. It says, beyond DLC, Takahashi also sees a possibility for expanding the Switch itself. Seeing so many fan-made customization options for Joy-Cons, he says Nintendo could also consider new Joy-Con designs and perhaps even new types of attachments in the future. So they're looking and seeing people making the atomic purple Joy-Cons and then mm-hmm. the Super Nintendo-themed ones, and they're like, you know what? Maybe we could do that too. Oh, are you kidding? If they came out with the GameCube one, where like he had GameCube Joy-Cons, I would buy those so fast. I know, I know. And they have insane profit margins on those Joy-Cons, by the way. So that's a great market for them to get into because you know everyone yep. who buys all the Amiibos is going to buy all the Joy-Cons. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's, Amiibos. It's going to happen. Um, I have four more stories. Okay. Go. Let me just run through mine, then you just go through all yours. Cause okay, cool. I feel like I'm going to cover some of the same ground that you um, have covered. Um, first, these are pretty much the same story, these two, but PlayStation games for January and the Xbox game with gold for January were announced oh and yeah the playstation plus one's really good this time around yeah yeah you got deus ex mankind divided which is a game i've always wanted to play but just haven't really like okay i have all these other games i've bought i'm not gonna buy that game right now now it's and free now i get to play it. i'm so excited i get to play that game they also have batman the telltale series that's cool whatever but they have deus ex i'm mankind excited about divided. that one because that's one that that is critically really well regarded and i'm like you know what I kind of want to play that, but I'm also kind of tired of Telltale games right now, so I don't really want to put down the money. It was like, whoa, it's free. I'll play it. Mm-hmm. The Xbox game with gold, I thought was really terrible. <laughs> it's really bad, I think. <laughs> it starts off with Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. It's going to oh, be a great game. Oh, that sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. They have Tomb Raider Underworld, the one that came out before mm. the reboot. That apparently wasn't amazing. They have Army of Two and Zombie. Zombies that Wii U launch game where you're fighting yep. zombies. You know, though, um, Army of Two, that's a pretty fun game, especially if you're playing at couch co-op with somebody. Yeah. I don't believe you. I, I like think it. you're just a Xbox shill now. Well, Army of Two is like a 30,000-year-old game, so it's still whatever, whatever. Nope. It's you're fun. lying. Two more stories. We'll do the Nintendo one first, then the less important one after Go. that. Nintendo Switch 64 gigabyte game cards allegedly have been delayed to 2019. So they're supposed yeah. to come out. And, and the game card means not an SD card, but like when you buy a physical copy of Mario, the game card it comes on. It's yeah, 64 which gigabytes. Is, for those that are too big for a game card, that's why you see games like NBA 2K18 where you're like, hey, you need additional SD card because we can't fit the whole game on this card, so you need to download extra shit to your Switch. Yeah, they say it's because of technical issues. I think it's because of cost. Those things probably yeah. cost a lot of money, and I don't think they have any developers who actually want to put their games on that, because they're opting instead to get a eight gigabyte card, and they just have everyone download the rest of the content. Yeah, and honestly, when it does eventually come out, because of the cost compared to a four gigabyte card, why would a company pay for the sixty four gigabyte card? I just don't. I think it's better for the consumer to have a sixty four gig card and not have to download the game. But this is also yeah. coming from the place where I download all my games to begin with anyway. Me so too. I've been doing I, it for now since I got my PS4, everything's digital. Yeah, it just makes more sense that way. It's much better. 
Although, if you really want to eat your Switch cartridges, they taste great. So you should try that. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so um, the other story, actually, this was today that this happened. Um, Ueda, who's the guy who did um, Shadow of the Colossus and Eco mm-hmm. and Last Guardian most recently, might have announced his new game. He had a picture come out on uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, and it's this really tall photograph. Most of the top of it is black with these kind of small things falling, and they're falling to this girl who's like ghost white looking, like kind of glowing white kind of, and she's looking over to something off frame. And just protruding in frame are these giant, like, giant hands. Okay. you're kind of, The way your hands are right now, I thought you were going to say a giant breast. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, interesting. Yep. Giant breasts. Yep, There's, she's just like these giant boobies. And she's like <laughs> boobies. Uh, no, she's giant hands. So it looks like they might be going for like another Last Guardian, where it's kind of like you're worth this big kind of creature hmm. of some kind. Um, it's called the picture. The file is called Beauty and the Beast 2018. Ooh, 2018. 2018, oh. which is surprising because they've made a game in not a decade. <laughs> um, but yeah. people also thinking that it just is. Uh, promotional image for their company as a whole and maybe isn't a game gotcha so we're not quite sure yet but we'll see something to look out for cool that's all i got for stories so you you take it okay uh you remember death stranding no i haven't heard of that game before oh well there was an uh, an interview with hideo kojima in a japanese gaming magazine called denkeki denkeki playstation yep where he one yeah Classic, classic, classic. Magazine. Everyone knows the dinky Japanese um, gaming he, magazine. <laughs> he gave a quote that said, "Development on Death Stranding is going well enough that Sony told us we have never before seen a game being created at such a fast pace. We are planning an announcement that will further surprise everyone in 2018." The only thing to be surprising is it's coming out in 2018. Isn't that? I think that's. That's insane. I think he's. They just need to shut up about this game until they can actually show us something they, that they matters. Do. I at this point they've shown so much. If they didn't say anything for the next two years and said, "Okay, by the way, guys, now it's coming out," I'd be fine yeah. with that. But that's interesting. I, I yeah. think. I think what that means to me is Sony has all these games coming out um, with like God of War and you know Days Gone and uh, and Spider Man. Those those are going to release this year, and then Sony's going to in E three kind of be like, okay. Death Stranding's coming out in 2019. I think that would still be sooner than most people are expecting. Yeah. I think was it Mark uh, Cerny said during PlayStation Experience that he was able to play four to five hours of the game, which means that that's yeah. done enough to play. Yeah. Knowing the kinds of games that Hideo Kojima makes, it's going to be a long game. So four to five hours probably isn't a huge percentage of that game. It's probably a pretty small percentage of it. Yeah. So maybe not Two more. this year, but that's still cool. Number that's one. good to hear. Yeah, that's really cool. Number one, the PSN has accidentally leaked uh, Destiny 2's next expansion. Yeah, I They heard published about that. details of God of Mars, which uh, features a brand new area for players to explore called the Frigid Vale of Mars. It'll be going up against Charlemagne, who has reawakened on Mars and imprisoned Rasputin within an ancient vault. It contains everything you'd think it would do. More story missions, extra weapons, armor, co-op activities, multiplayer arenas. Uh, apparently that's coming in, I think it was March. I already closed the story, but oh well. Uh, and then the last cool, one, cool. Amazon lists 18, uh, lists and then removes 18 Nintendo Switch untitled game placeholders, ranging from $60 oh, yeah. to $100. Uh, that means, in my head, we're going to have a Nintendo Direct very soon, and Amazon's soon. ready to put up pre-orders for all 18 of those games. Yeah, I think that, because here's the thing. apparently... According to Gamerant, there are rumors that the event will be on June, uh, January 10th, I think it said, 10th or 11th? 11th. 11th, yeah. Yeah, I so I think... what that means, those placeholder $99 games. I think it starts going to the prediction switch. territory. So we're going to talk about our 2018 stuff. And I think yeah. that Nintendo has not talked a lot about 2018, and I don't think it's because they have nothing. I think it's because... They like to play their cards close to the chest, and they're about to show their hand. They're about to show everyone their dick! And they ain't bluffing. They got a killer hand, I think. They got a big dick! Do you want to do our kind of 2018 looking forward first, or do you want to do predictions first? Let's do our 28 looking forward first, because I know some of your predictions are about games coming out in 2018. Some of them, yeah. 
yeah, let's take a look real quick at that. So we basically just want to take a look at what is not everything that's been confirmed to have a release in 2018, but a lot Those of just games that are we don't know cool. a lot about or yeah, I mean, like no big. one fucking gives a shit about Gintana Rumble or World to the West or I love this one. Gundam- let's see if we can pronounce this one. This game's called Gundaminiums. Is that about Gundam condominiums and? Like that's I literally that's just read Gundamoniums, and then you oh. said, and then I want to talk about Gundamoniums. You cut out on the FaceTime, so I didn't quite hear you. Uh, it says Gundamonium. It like, no, which it's is like Gundaminiums. pandemonium, but with Gundams. I want to call it oh Gundaminiums because it sounds like a condominium with a Gundam. <laughs> Condoms in mini size with Gundams. <laughs> oh, man. No, so let's take a look at January. Like January, has January coming out on January 19th. I know, right? January 19th, Kirby Battle Royale is coming out on Nintendo 3DS. Mm-hmm. Uh, no more 3DS that games. One Stop it. I know, right? Get out of here, 3DS. Lost oh. Sphere is coming out on Nintendo Switch, PC, and PS4. That's the one from I Am Setsuna yes. guys that you yes. knew that I didn't know. I was like, what is yeah. this game? Fucking yeah, Chad's what? like, let's not do this one. This one's stupid. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the guys who made I Am Setsuna. We're putting that on there. Nice, That's nice, nice, good. nice. Which the demo for that is the out impatient. if you want to play that. Yeah. Uh, that same day, sorry, January 23rd for Lost Sphere. The Inpatient, also on the 23rd, is coming to PlayStation VR. That's the mm-hmm. guys who made Until Dawn, Supermassive Games. This is the prequel to that game in VR. Uh, blah, blah, blah. January 26th, we have, you're welcome, Travis, Monster Hunter World on PS4 and Xbox One. Did you but ever play that demo? That one. No, the I beta didn't. demo? I didn't either. Dragon Ball Fighter Z as well is coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Have you ever played a Dragon Ball fighting game? On the GameCube, I did. Yeah, they're actually really fun. They're so fun. I played the one on the Wii with the nunchuck and the Wii remote, and you're mm-hmm. like actually doing the like kamehameha and the gestures well, for it. I just liked how you'd have to find opportunities to kind of charge up and to, to go into a Saiyan, to go Super Saiyan. Yeah. So I'd like beat a guy, push him down, like charge up a little bit, and then that was always really cool. I like actually like those games a lot. But there's a what I am more excited about is a fighting game coming out the next few days, which is mm-hmm. called The City of Final Fantasy NT for PlayStation yeah. 4. That's on January 30th. That's I'm going to definitely awesome. play the demo of that one because there's a demo coming up very soon, I think, or like mm-hmm. a weekend that you can play. I think it's yep. next weekend. Yep. La la. And that's it for January that's important. Uh, February then is a little, comes bit, February. S- a little bit smaller, but there's still some good Shout stuff. Shout out to the there. Colossus. That's. Of the early games mm. in that year, Shadow mm. of the Colossus mm. is probably mm. February my more anticipated. That's a month away. Yeah, it is. Actually, it is. A um, month and four days away. So excited. So excited. That's going to be a fun one. I can't wait for that one. February um, 15th, two days before my birthday, Dynasty Warriors 9. Have you ever played one of those games? No, I haven't. My roommate, sophomore year of college, junior year of college, Jared Schultz, fucking loves these games. <laughs> And they are so boring to me and dumb. <laughs> but, man, he played that and Fire Emblem. And both of those games are boring as shit to watch. I'm like, all right, man. Fire I'm Emblem gonna, is I'm awesome. Go. It's it's boring to watch, but it's a really fun game. Are you talking about Warriors or are you talking about Fire Emblem? Fire Emblem in general is what he would play okay. as well yeah. as Dynasty Warriors, which is what Fire Emblem Warriors is kind of based on. Well, it's the same developers. It's that same, uh, yeah, it's that same style. Yeah. No, it's not the same style. It is the same people who make those games. I know, but it's the Fire Emblem franchise in the style of Dynasty Warriors. And you're going to say, yeah, but it's the same developer. And I know that, but it's still yeah, in that same style. Yeah, but it's the same developer. <laughs> Woman! And then the remake, uh, the remaster of Secret of Mana on PS4, PS Vita, and PC. I didn't realize that was a PlayStation exclusive thing. Well, it's not. It's huh. also on PC. Shut up. No one plays that. <laughs> Then on February 16th, one day before my birthday, we have Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 coming to Nintendo Switch. I think it's Are funny to get those. I'm debating because I'm not a huge fan of like action games in that style, but this yeah. is supposed to be a really top-notch, best-in-class yeah. action game. And it's two games in one. It's a lot of bang for the buck. I think I'm going to get it. I've been I was just thinking yesterday, I was like, "You know what? I'm looking for something to play on my Switch, but I don't really have anything that's exclusive to it that I want to bust it out for. So I think this might be the next thing I play. Mm-hmm. And then get ready, because four days later on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, Metal Gear Survive. I'm so Ooh. curious how this game's going to go over. I've heard it plays really well. I've actually heard from people who've played it, they like it. It's yeah. just such an offshoot of that franchise. 
Yep. It just doesn't make... I don't know. It's very strange. Very, very strange. A tactical stealth zombie survival game. <laughs> <laughs> Payday 2 zombies. comes out the end of the month. I want to play Payday. I want to play that game. Yeah, you know I think game it's is? interesting that they came out... That that's coming out on Nintendo Switch and VR, I think they said, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's already VR. It's also coming to VR. But yeah, it's like it's a bank heist game where you kind of play people online to do a bank heist. And you can do, pull it off perfectly and the cops never come. Or you could do something wrong and the cops end up coming. You have a shootout to get out of the bank. Like, it just sounds awesome. That sounds like so much fun. I want to play that game. Yeah. It's, it's, an, old, it's an old game, but it's still probably going to be fun. Coming out in March, March 6th, Bravo Team for PlayStation VR. I can't wait for that one. I think that's also Supermassive Games. That's their kind of oh, looks like yeah. a cover-based shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very busy. Very busy people. And then on the 13th, Devil May Cry HD Collection is coming out again. They already did an HD collection for PS3 and Xbox 360. Now it's yep. coming out for PS4 and Xbox One. Many people are speculating that that leads to Devil May Cry 5. So this is actually a new story we didn't even mention, but it ties in this perfectly. The guy who made Devil May Cry has said two years ago he's working on a game, hasn't said anything else, and this week said, hey, guys, it's almost done. Almost I'm not, done? Almost done. I'm not telling you what it is, but it's almost done. Dang. And what a coincidence that Devil May Cry HD collection is coming out in just a few months. you think that months. was the game? <laughs> uh, no, that, yeah, that, that was the game, yeah. Uh, no, I think yeah, I think it makes sense. It's going to be another Devil May Cry game. And this is one that I actually just saw on this. We're reading this off Wikipedia. I just saw this today, and I've, I've totally forgotten about this game. But Golem for PlayStation VR is something they what announced is Golem? when... It's something they announced when VR was announced, or back when it was like Pro- Project Morpheus. And it was a game where you are... I think it was you're a girl... And you're controlling... I want to play it then. I don't play as girls. <laughs> you're controlling this I'm rock a man. golem. <laughs> and so you're basically controlling it as it goes out in the world, beats things up. And I was like, it looked really oh, that cool. Sounds like, that sounds like fun. I actually. totally forgot it existed. But wait a second, though. The most hotly anticipated game of the year is coming out after that. And that is... Yeah, then we a whole week worth of shit. It's just a huge week, but it starts with the best game ever. Sea of Thieves. Yeah! I can't wait to not get not gonna Sea play of that Thieves. Game. PC I am Xbox really One. curious to see what the reviews are going to be like, though. I have the feeling it's not going to go over very well, which is a shame because it's the first game being released on the Xbox that's an exclusive in a long time. It's like a big game. It's not PUBG. Yep. Oh, I'm, so, ner- I'm nervous for March them. 20th, Sea of Thieves and Yakuza 6 Song of Life comes to PS4. Mm-hmm. 21st, the next day, Valkyria Chronicles 4 comes to PS4. Apparently, it's coming later to Xbox One and Switch, question mark? Or maybe PC, I don't remember. Uh, it's coming to PC and Switch as well, yeah. Uh, 23rd is a is a like big day. Big day. You have yeah. Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, and A Way Out. Uh, I, I'm very excited for A Way Out, mostly because we both have to play it, and we both have to get it and play it together. Yes, absolutely. We can do that online, can't we? Yeah. Oh, okay. and actually, I forgot they announced at Game Awards that only one of us has to have it. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, if, even playing that's online, a game that I was that's crazy. Yeah, I was so excited for that game, but his rant at the Game Awards actually made me less excited for it. Like I was like, <laughs> "Ooh, do I want to support that with my money?" Anyway, I'm probably gonna get it. That's PS4, <laughs> Xbox One. Neither I don't have. Two, I don't PS4, have morals. PC. I'm getting it anyway. Then on the 27th, four days later, Far Cry 5 comes out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. MLB The Show comes out for PS4. There's also rumors that God of War 3, or God of War for PS4 is coming out in that same time frame as well. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a crazy fucking week in March. Yeah, that's like October of this year. Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey, Assassin's Creed, Wolfenstein 2. All in one day, Stranger Things 2. Oh, yeah, and... Well, something else came out. Oh, yeah, the new Saw movie, Jigsaw, came out that day as well, which is yeah. obviously the highlight of that day. Far and then the 30th... Hey, maybe we should make ending... Far Cry 4 our February game. Oh, yeah. Do you have Far Cry well, 4? No, actually, don't. I have Far Cry 3. No. Or, no, uh, do I have Far Cry I 4? Too. I don't know. No, no I have 4 because that was free we'll PlayStation we'll Plus. We can do it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, spoiler alerts. Don't talk about our game of the month until we're finished with Earthbound. Spoilers. Spoilers. Ending March on March 30th is Agony, which Chad just looked up. Agony! That's from Into the Woods, Stephen Sondheim. I was in that play. It's about, Not, it's about blue it, balls. It's a song about blue balls. 
Uh, Do you have any blah, thoughts blah, blah. On? Yeah, that game. I for some reason agony when I saw it on the list. I was like, oh, isn't that a game that we saw announced like at a pre-show? But I looked at it again. I was like, oh, I don't remember seeing this, but it looks weird and hellish as fuck, with like weird naked people with vagina teeth faces. Very hellish. But I want to play a horror, a horror survival game, so maybe I'll check that out. Check it out. Ch-ch-check there is it out. The library. A horror survival game coming out in April. A little bit different tones coming out on Xbox, PS4, and the PC on April thirteenth. We Happy Few, Ooh. which was shown off. Isn't that the one that kind of looks like Bioshock? Yeah, it's kind of Bioshocky, but you're in this place for like, it's this little town, I guess, where everyone like just seems super drugged out and way too happy. Yeah, which makes it creepy. Creepy. And then Creepy. Uh, May, TBA, uh, TBA date, coming to Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and Windows, the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. There's a lot of games that are have not been announced for April and May and on. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. Well, we do have, down below that, oh, a I list know, of like, games unscheduled that are releases, like yeah. Q1 or Q2 or Fall or Spring, things like that. So these are going to be in There's alphabetical a- order. Yeah, these are alphabetical order. Right yeah. off the bat, Anthem, PS4 and Xbox One. That's the EA game that kind of looks like Destiny on crack. It's, also, it's made by BioWare, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's BioWare, published by EA. They took a lot Hopefully of the people off of up. the visceral Star Wars game to work on Anthem Yep, as well. Um, that's going to be an interesting game to see play out, so I'm curious about that one. I'm sure we will see a ton of that at E3 next year, this, yep. this year. Code Vein I highlighted, but I forgot to look it up. But I feel like that was another one that I was like, <laughs> that sounds familiar that maybe we saw it at a pre-show thing. I don't know, but that's coming, too, sometime. <laughs> Concrete, Concrete Genie coming to PS4. Mm-hmm. That one is the uh, painting one that we saw at PSX, uh, where you're the little kid that kind of looks like a ripoff of Delson. Oh, we'll see yeah. More of that too. Yep. Crackdown 3, about time. Yep. Followed by another. Th- sometime in the first half. Then another threequel, Dark Siders three. Dark Siders three. Which I'm excited about that one. Are you? And really? then another game that's not a sequel. You uh, can do the next one. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. Oh, Days no Gone. Days Gone. Days Gone and Detroit Become Human. Both PS4. Detroit has like a fall. No, not sorry, a spring. Yeah, they've basically said it's coming out in spring. Yeah. Dreams. And D for Dreams on PS4, which they are still claiming is coming out in 2018. Cool. I'm cool. nervous about that one. Yeah. I think the whole world is. <laughs> is it Fee, the next one? Faye? Fee? I think it's, I think it's Fee. Fee? Okay. It's like Faye. It's kind of confusing. I think it's Faye, like Fairy? I don't know. It could be Faye. But it looks gorgeous. It does. This is the one that has like that purple style. and pink art style. And, yeah. It looks it's like purple, gorgeous. pink, and Switch, black. Switch, PS4, Xbox One. Yeah. Oh, it's going to switch as well. Oh, God that's of right. War quarter one PS4 January event. Yeah, you're breaking up. I didn't hear you, but I'm assuming you talked about God of War. La, 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 la. Yeah, I said God of War. Who do you think I am? <laughs> America Ferrera. Well, you're Jurassic not Jurassic World, World Evolution. Evolution. This is that park builder. You just said it at the same oh, exact time. Whoa! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> that's that park builder game coming to PS4, Xbox One. <laughs> this next one, go for it. Kingdom Hearts Three. I have predictions <laughs> about that one. There's just when oh, they said that's 2018 at E3, I'm like, no, no, it's not. That's not coming out in 2018. Spoiler alert: that's one of my predictions. Kingdom Hearts 3 is not coming out in 20, 2018. It's just not going to happen. Kirby Star Allies, that Mega Man 11 game that looks weird. Metro Sexodus looks sexy. Then we have Project Octopath Traveler, which is Damn, actually I still haven't played the demo to that. I have yeah, it still. Yeah, title. Yeah, I still have I the have demo, but I haven't played it yet. I gotta do that. I gotta do some things, man. Red Dead Redemption Two, Dose, Dose. Uh, I mean, what can be said about that game? It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Q yep. two. It's gonna be awesome. Q two. Shen Shenmue, uh, Shenmue three. three. I I thought this game already came out and no one liked it. Did you say Shenmue? <laughs> Is it Shenmue? Is it Shen? Everyone has always debated Shenmue versus Shenmue. No one has ever said Shenmue. I thought it was Shenmue. Okay, Shenmue. Okay, nope. Shen. That's the one that got a Kickstarter campaign at PlayStation's E3 conference two years ago. It had that terrible trailer with everyone having ridiculously lifeless faces. Yep. 
that was fun. Interesting. Skull and Bones. I mean, if if that looked interesting to you. I could that's care the, less about that game. Do you know what, though? The there were a ship, bunch of the pirate people, ship combat game. There were a bunch of people after E3 who saw that and were like, oh, that looks great. I cannot wait. I'm like, oh, okay. So there's an audience for this. I had no idea. I, I thought saw it was that... super cool until I realized you are you are the boat the whole time, and that's it. Yeah, you're, that's all yeah exactly. It. I would want to be a pirate on the boat, but I also don't want to play Sea of Thieves. <laughs> 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 Spider-Man is next. Woo! PS4. Is this Q1, Q2? No way. There's no way it's coming out I don't out know if soon. that's accurate. Um, I thought that would be a fall game, but I guess... I... Yeah, yeah. I don't think they've yeah, actually the said anything on that one. Oh no! Yeah. Wait, no! Didn't they say that was going to be first half? Because it had a 2018 release date at E3s, and they said everything that had a 2018 was first half. Oh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. What do we got next? State of Decay Two, another one for Xbox that just ah, didn't hook me. Didn't look good. Looked yeah. bad graphics. Yeah, I didn't care for that one. Soul Calibur Six got announced recently for PS4, Xbox mm-hmm. One, coming out next uh, 2018. That's this year now. 2018 is this yeah. year now. Mm-hmm. And then we got System Shock, which is the sci-fi game that inspired Bioshock. Uh, from the same fact, developers, Ken... from Irrational Games, which was... But it, it's still it's a very game. similar gameplay style yeah. as Bioshock. And Ken Levine, who made Bioshock, worked on Bioshock. Uh, so some, who worked on Bioshock, worked on System Shock, too. Yep. This is a game I've actually always have wanted to play, so it's very cool it's coming out next year. Coming out on Linux, so you can play it. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Yeah. I have a Linux machine. Oh, look, and PS4. they call that game an action role-playing game. They do. Hmm. Isn't that what I said? Action RPG? Nope. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> the Crew 2 coming out. That got pushed back by Ubisoft, but uh, yep. that's coming out Q2 slash Q3, Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. We have The Walking Dead, the final season. Thank God that TV show needs to end. Oh, wait, it's the <laughs> one that people like and want it to keep going. Uh, yeah, Telltale. Also yeah, coming out from Telltale, Telltale Wolf Among Us Season 2. Mm-hmm. We have an untitled Fire Emblem game coming to the Switch. I don't as remember that one getting as... announced, but I assume it, it's one of the hundred. No, it was, Fire it was announced. So they had last year they had their January event. Yeah. And then they had a Fire Emblem event a week later. And they oh, announced that's it right. Then. Okay. Yeah. Um, they also have an untitled Yoshi game coming out for the Switch. That one actually looked like I might be interested in it. Yeah, I would. that one looks pretty fun. And then I can't wait for Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus to come out on the Switch that year Dude, you as should well. totally get that day one and play it. I, I, I'm probably uh, going to, I've been waiting to get it for One Switch. thing I didn't mention in my discussion of it was there is no, a scene. No, it's too late. You can't talk about it anymore. There's a scene with anymore. Hitler. No, you can't talk about it anymore, Chad. There's a scene with Hitler. No, you can't talk about it anymore. That is one of my favorite <laughs> scenes from video games ever. I was cracking really? my shit up. Well, don't spoil oh, it. Oh, no, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Play You're going to be playing it this year. Know. It's 2018. That's right. I, I, I keep forgetting it's the new year already. Happy so those new are all the year. games that have been announced and are coming out. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, coming out in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I just got very those, excited well, and had to, had to show my boobs off to the camera. Yeah, and I'm looking away, look back at Chad, and I see his nips. <laughs> see Chad's nips. Oh, let's run through. We're going long right now. It's been an hour and a half. Let's go yeah. through real quick our predictions for 2018. I've only got three. I'm just going to go bam, bam, bam. I Eat got it. six. Number one. I'm ready. I think the new Pokemon coming out next year for Nintendo Switch is going to be a new Pokemon Red slash Blue slash Yellow. And it is gonna, it's gonna—it's not going to be like a remaster. It's going to completely okay. change every game mechanic of Pokemon into something Ooh. crazy that we've never seen before. But it's going to do so it you with say, that original 151 and those original locations and gym leaders. When you say red, blue, yellow, you mean it's not going to be like, here's Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. It's going to be, here's the Pokemon game on Switch. No, it's I the mean, there might, be, there might be two of them. Okay. Red slash blue, but it's gonna be that generation, that it's map. Canto. It's gonna yeah. be Kanto. It's gonna be those 151 Pokemon. And I it's, think that's it's smart. gonna completely take the franchise in a new direction. But it's gonna be um, that group of Pokemon. I completely agree uh, with that because they want to keep the scale low for this major rehaul, since they're gonna be doing all the mechanics redone and all that. Yep. They already have a lot of those uh, character models completed. Yeah, already like they have that Pokedex app for the iPhone where they have HD character models for all those 150 Pokemon already. Mm-hmm, so it just, mm-hmm. it'd be easier for them to do that. And I think you would really call back to the 
older school Pokemon fans. So I agree with you there. Yep. Uh, prediction, prediction number two for 2018. Mm-hmm. I do not think we will see any new console hardware announcements. That means yeah, I agree. There won't be any new announcements. No, yeah. that means no slimmed down version of the 3DS. No a switch with smaller bezels. No slim to PlayStation. I think we're the console we have right now are the ones like we're a have. slim PS um, PSVR kind of thing. Like a nope. I think we're still nope. going to see because they just released the updated HDR pass through version of that this month mm-hmm. or in October. Yeah. I think we're going to see zero new hardware announcements. Yeah. And then now, finally... Let me, no, here's a clarifying that, though. Ah! Would, would you consider the Scorpio announcement a year before it came out? Would that count as an announcement? Yeah. We didn't see it come out. Okay. Yeah, I think that would count they as an announcement. They didn't show off the hardware or anything. They just said the six teraflops thing. Nope. They are, they are riding high on everything, and they just came out with Scorpio on Xbox's side that they're not going to even announce anything that might cause any of that to slow down. Mm-hmm. Finally... It's kind of it's not really a huge prediction, especially into that news story we just read. But I think Joy Cons are going to go crazy this year. I think they're going to come out with so many new colors and themes. They're going to rather mm-hmm. than just being solid colors, they're going to start doing like these are the Fire Emblem Joy Cons. These are the um, yeah. Pokemon Joy Cons. These are going to be Atomic Purple see through. These are going and then we might even mm-hmm. see GameCube versions or N sixty four controller I think, versions. Well, because and I think you're right on that because they apparently are. The GameCube had analog triggers, and a lot of those GameCube games rely on it. So they might be like when you pay eighty bucks for or ninety bucks for our GameCube Joy-Con or uh, controllers, you're going to get Super Mario Sunshine with it as well, and yeah. introducing the Virtual Console kind of thing. Yeah, they'll, they'll do stuff like well, that's that. That's a good idea. Like I don't have that in my predictions. Comes with that? Yeah, I don't have that in my predictions, but I think you're totally spot on with that one. Matter of fact, here's the first one we already agree on to an extent. Um, I have either met Pokemon or Metroid or both are coming this year. So, Ooh. You, so not one of those is going to come out at the very least, but I think both are going to come out this year. I think Pick one. Metroid will be a summer game and Pokemon will be the big fall game for the okay. switch. Met- you think S- Metroid prime four is going to be ready for the summer? Like late summer, like the September, oh, late summer, man. Okay. Yeah. So here's, here's my reasoning. And I think this is good reasoning. There's been rumor that Nintendo has this a really strong lineup for 2018. Obviously, it can't be as good as last year with Mario and Zelda coming out in the same year. But they're going to have a really strong lineup of games. Yeah. If they knew they had a really strong lineup of games coming out in 2018, why would they announce Pokemon and Metroid at E3 if they had other games they could have talked about that are coming out in a more reasonable time frame? I don't know. Because those games have probably been, been worked on for a while, and they're coming out this year. So... Pokemon Switch, we will not see until E3 or after. Mm. It will not be something to talk about early on, because they don't have to give a huge leeway on that game. People okay. will buy that anyway. But Metroid, we will see this month in January at the Direct. Ooh, that soon. That soon, we will see it. We saw a title um, screen six months ago. I know. We're going to see footage. Dang. Or, we're going to see footage in January. So that's going to be right into the Nintendo Direct that's happening in January. So it's going to be a huge Direct, which isn't barely a prediction, but this is what's going to happen in the, in the Direct. They're going to show off the Nintendo Online service, and it's going to show off Virtual Console being tied in and have some sort of achievement system with a Nintendo twist. Ooh, achievements! So Metroid Prime 4 footage shown off there. Switch, uh, Animal Crossing version uh, on Switch will be announced for a summer release, and they will be dis- they will disappoint me by showing off more 3DS games. <laughs> so that's my uh, Nintendo prediction. Uh, number two is Bethesda will announce and release a Skyrim-sized RPG that is not set in the world of Elder Scrolls or Fallout. Ooh. I think it's time. Uh, Crackdown 3 will, of course, come out, and it will disappoint. It will not be seen as worth the wait. No surprise there. And uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 will not be released this year. Also, no surprise there. (laughs) We've already talked about. And there will be no N64 Classic this year because the NES is coming out in in the summer. I think they probably have it ready enough, but if the NES is coming out in the summer, they want to give that six months of shelf time, and they'll take it off again. And then 2019, we'll see N64 Classic. Interesting. Those are my predictions for 2018. That sounds pretty awesome. What are your predictions, everyone else out there in the world with ear balls that are listening in? Tell us at splitscreengaminggotpodcasts at gmail.com or at splitscreengp on social medias. Holden, remind me, what are we playing this month? 
This month, we'll be playing Earthbound, Earthbound. on our SNES Classic, SNES which you can also Classic. get it on a 3DS, or you can be a jerk and you can pirate it online. Or you can get it on the Wii U. And be a jerk to yourself. Or you can buy the original cartridge in an SNES and play it there, too. That's a waste to play one game. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Hold, uh, hold in. What are we talking about next week? Next week, well, next week we're going to talk about more 2018 stuff and what should Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft do to make this a successful year for each of them. Ooh. Stay Ooh. tuned, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your January 1st week, and we'll see Enjoy you occasionally weekly from year. now. Occasionally weekly. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>